Welcome to this special edition of Central Oregon Daily, The Road to Redemption. For the small town of Lapine, redemption came in the form of a baseball team, three generations of a hometown family, and a community looking for a return to their glory days. A quarter mile north of where I'm standing lies Lapine High School, founded in 1979 and home of the Hawks. The Hawks, like the town, have experienced ups and downs, but today, they're experiencing a resurgence, and the community is taking note. This is small town America. This is Lapine. And this is the power a family, a football team, and a school can have on an entire community. This is Hawks Pride. Fourth quarter, and it comes to this. Unbeaten season on the line. Conference championship on the line. History in the making. I feel like we are judged unfairly. Obviously, if I thought that I was living in a town of thugs and thieves and criminals, I wouldn't want to be raising my family here. Basically, playing as an athlete at Lapine High School was probably the time of my life. I want the guys to be able to walk around with their chest out, but the church says I'm from Lapine. It's definitely something that's important to our family. We love athletics, we love Lapine, we love the community of Lapine, so we're invested. It is one for the history books, it's also one for the coaching family tree. Uh, Bo DeForest, his father Dave DeForest, a longtime coach uh, at Lapine High School, and of course the grandson Wyatt DeForest. We have the ability to win the state championship. I know for a fact we do. I have my dad coaching me, my grandpa coaching me, football's family, and the teammates are family. He wanted it to feel like it did in the 90s. In the summer of 1983, David DeForest moved his family to Lapine after accepting an assistant coaching position at the relatively new Lapine High School. His son, Bo, was in the fourth grade. The school was nearly brand new at the time. The kids took great pride in that school. It, it, was, it was a neat atmosphere. In 1988, Bo entered his freshman year at Lapine High, where his father, David, was now the head coach. Bo had a football class. The expectation was to make playoffs. It, it was just a matter of how deep we were going to go. As a senior, was uh, co-player of the year for 2A football. In 92, we lost in the semis in my senior year um, to Vail, who won the championship. And in 2016, 24 years after taking off his Hawks jersey for the last time, Bo DeForest was named the head coach of the Lapine Hawks. And as life has a way of doing, everything had come full circle. Coach DeForest now had a son of his own. Tailback and middle linebacker Wyatt DeForest was entering his junior season at Lapine the same year his father took the program's reins. This is like the best experience you can ask for. Two generations of DeForest were once again leading the Hawks from the field and the sidelines. But if two to four are good, three are better. Bo's first order of business as head coach was naming his father David defensive coordinator, making the Hawks truly 
a three-generational family affair. I lean on him a lot. Um, obviously, he's, he's gone through more experiences than I have. Um, he has more knowledge. What I appreciate, and I truly appreciate, Bo is the head coach. Very, very historic game. Very meaningful game. Everything on the line. This is big time Mountain Valley Conference football here on a Friday night. Week 8, Senior Night. Come on. The Pines 7 0, wearing their navy blues. Hosting Pleasant Hill. Have a great day, man. Have a great day. In the first half, the Hawks get off to a slow start before things go from bad to worse. Go get him! Jordan, let's go! Ball to my dog! And by halftime, the Hawks trail by five. What is the confusion about what you do? You hit number two, the second guy. Then you play the quarterback coming at you. Go out there, fired up, ready to go this second half. Make it happen right now, man. Let's go. Get a break. Let's get on the field. Hey, I want to hear you guys fired up. Let's go. Hawks on three, one, two, three. Oh! Backside. In the second half, more of the same. And with four minutes left in the third quarter, Lapine's perfect season is in jeopardy. But then, a spark. Nice job, Chandler! Let's go! Hey, Diab right here, man! Great job! Hawks have converted every third and fourth down in this critical fourth quarter. With the clock ticking down, the Hawks get one final drive to win the game. And it comes to this. Hawks come to line of scrimmage. Full house backfield. Rose under center. Here's the snap. He rolls right. Looking 44. Stop the white flat. He's got it. He grambled it. Touchdown, Hawks. After Wyatt scores the game-tying touchdown, Bo calls his son's number one more time. In 1991, I heard Bo address his teammates. He told his teammates how much he loved them. He came out of the locker room, he was still in his full gear. I gathered him up in my arms, I hugged him, and I apologized for not getting him to the final. I don't want Bo to have to do that with Wyatt. In the school's four decade history, they've never won a state title in football or any other male team sport. And you can feel that pain, the pain of falling just short when you speak with Bo and David DeForest. When we come back, the Hawks' quest to make history continues on their road to redemption.
after completing only the second undefeated regular season in school history. The Hawks stepped onto this field on an icy November night to host their first football playoff game in 17 years. A dramatic back and forth affair versus Rainier ended up coming down to the final minute. comes to this. Hawks fall just short, 28-22, not able to pull out one more miracle win. The players on the field. The emotions are raw, the heartache is palpable, but uh, what a season for this team. They say time heals all wounds. For Coach DeForest, his staff, and the seniors on the 2017 Lapine Hawks football team, the truth of that saying will be put to the test. I see it in my head and dreams at night. Obviously it still bothers me. But as winter turns to spring and the sting of the football season thaws like the very ground it was played on, heartbreak is replaced with hope, the hope of a state title. One final opportunity for the Hawks class of 2018, this time on the diamond. And led by the same man that led them in football, Coach Bo DeForest. We feel like in the playoffs we have uh, four to six guys that we can pitch at any time, and uh, there's not a whole lot of let off in between from one to the next. We've faced Taft, the number one in the state right now. We beat them eight to five, so we we can run with the best of them. We have a really strong bullpen, so we got a lot of arms. Definitely, we have a good chance of going all the way. A lot of us played football as well, and it came down to that tragic ending of the season, and so I think it's pushed us to do better and go further this year and do what we're more expected to do. We're still playing well and we're the, where we're supposed to be. We're in the playoffs, so, so we have a shot. I think football ended a little bit too soon for us. Um, I thought we are going to have to capitalize in baseball and get the job done in baseball and bring home the state title. It's going to take our, our best game every single week, so um, I'm just going to take it game by game and, and we'll see where it goes. The Hawks cruised to a 20-win, four-loss regular season and lit up the scoreboard, scoring just shy of 10 runs per game on their way to earning the four seed in the 3A state playoffs. The Hawks come into this first round OSWA state playoff game off a loss to Pleasant Hill. Round of 16, Lapine hosting Vail. Coach DeForest hands the ball to Angelo Rose. A four-run lead quickly becomes nine, and then extends to 17 as the Hawks win comfortably. That's gonna be it for us. Hawks win it here, 18 to four, and they will advance into the next round against the winner of the Pleasant Hill Arrogant game. I'll be honest, a, a lot of coming back into coaching is I've, I do have unfinished business, you know. I want to be a state champion also. Never have been. To win a title, DeForest and the Hawks will have to get past a familiar foe in the state quarterfinals. League rival Pleasant Hill. P. Hill is headed to Lapine filled with confidence after beating the Hawks in the final game of the regular season. They're an incredibly well-coached team, so they're going to be here ready to play. As the game begins, P. Hill picks up where they left off. Building a 2-0 lead before things go from bad to extremely bleak. The bottom of the sixth inning begins with Lapine trailing 4-0. to 
with only six outs left in their season. But then, a rally. Load the bases, and Angela Rose steps to the plate with two outs. The clutch hit drives in two runs, cutting the lead in half. Before right field senior Eddie Price steps to the plate. Price puts the barrel of the bat on a fastball for a three-run home run. And just like that, the Hawks take a one-run lead. The Hawks laid in in heroics propel Lapine into the state semifinals. Awaiting the Hawks in Lincoln City is the number one team in the state, the Taft Tigers. The kids are going to find out, no matter how successful this season's been, if we have a loss there at the end, it's going to hurt even that much worse the deeper you go, the closer you get to the championship, but it's worth it. Hawks come into this semifinal game against the number one Taft Tigers. That brings us here to uh, this semifinal game at the pit here in Lincoln City and Taft High School. The Hawks strike first, putting three runs on the board in the top of the first inning before handing the ball to their ace, Jake Farnsworth, with a three-run cushion. It's a back and forth affair. And as the teams enter the seventh and final inning, Lapine leads five to three. The Hawks add three insurance runs. And DeForest trots Farnsworth out to the mound to finish what he started. Let's go, Hawks! Farnsworth rears back and hurls a fastball to the plate. Securing a historic victory and sending the Hawks to their first state championship bid in school history. It wasn't the most artful game, but they pull out the 8-6 victory and they'll move on to the state championship game. Obviously, being a state champion would be huge, but ultimately, I just want the kids to be competitive and to have a sense of pride in what they've accomplished. The town of Lapine sends the boys off like they're already champions. But the Hawks still have unfinished business. The state playoff pathway for these Hawks began on May 23rd, and they are now here on the verge of a state championship opportunity, taking on the Horizon Christian Ball Club. State Championship, Volcano Stadium. The Hawks wearing their home whites, taking on Horizon Christian and seeking their first state title in the school's 40-year history. As the game begins, the Hawks give up one run and then another in the top of the second. The bottom of the second inning sees the momentum shift, sparked by a leadoff triple from Wyatt DeForest. Yeah! Lapine charges back and takes a 3-2 lead. In the third, Wyatt steps to the plate again and drives a fastball deep over the left field fence. Giving the Hawks a two-run cushion. Heading into the sixth inning, Lapine leads 6-3, but the dream quickly begins to feel like it could turn into a nightmare. Horizon scores two runs, and all of a sudden it's a one-run game. The mood in the Hawks' dugout shifts from elation to defeat. 
But the Hawks answer the call, scoring four runs in the bottom of the sixth and taking a five-run lead into the last inning. Coach DeForest sends his son to the mound one last time, and Wyatt delivers the exclamation point. On June 1, 2018, the Lapine Hawks made history and became champions. So the road to redemption that began right here on this field during spring training ends with a state title at Volcano Stadium in Kaiser and bragging rights that the players will carry with them for the rest of their lives. But for Coach Bo DeForest, it's about more than the title and more than the team. He gets the final word when we come back. After the Lapine Hawks won the state baseball title, the patriarch of the family, David DeForest, announced he was retiring from coaching. His grandson, Wyatt, graduated two weeks later with a state title in his back pocket and his eye on the future and college baseball. As for Bo DeForest, he'll be back on the gridiron this fall, coaching up young men and continuing his quest to bring respect and honor to the community he loves. You know, one of the things that I really get excited about uh, is seeing the young kids and them be excited and them wearing their jerseys, you know, and being proud. Um, yeah. I know when I was a kid, you know, I, I looked up to those guys. <sighs> so to be able to see the young kids, be excited, um, be proud, you know, that's, that's a good one. That's good. That's what I'm really proud of. <laughs>